Have you ever been looking for a way to get your prints like <laughs> like this? Have you ever thought to yourself, gee, I sure wish I could go bigger, faster, stronger, and never really are satisfied with what you've accomplished? Then look no further, because boy, do I have the answer for you. You know, it's stuff like this that makes tech just so much fun. Hey, I'm Bay here at Boot Up with Bay Sharp, and coming in at just over two and a half times the diameter of the original nozzle is this girth ball of a tip at a whopping one millimeter. So the backstory is like everybody else. Small prints work just fine, but exploring the ideas of what an infinite z-axis can offer brings you down the path of multi-day or even week-long prints. Even vase mode or single shell printing becomes a reality with the added thickness of that big outline. But when a light bulb goes off in your head, you can't ignore exploring that path, which is where two-day prime shipping and a whole bag of nozzles comes in. Now, I have to be honest, taking down the original nozzle wasn't all that bad. Figuring out the shroud comes off along with this cable that I think it's a grounding cable and figuring my way around the heat sock, I got over it. And after heating up the nozzle, the temperature so you know nothing really breaks just unscrew the old one while supporting the hot end and screw the new one back on it's kind of simple right but this is where the trouble began it at least for me anyway after the actual installation for starters the bed really needed adjustment turns out I couldn't go high enough with the current end stop so after figuring out how the optical end stop does work it's just an adjustment screw on the back with some screws for securing and tightening the whole thing down the bed can also be lowered so that the belt is more in line with the end of the printer and a fun little side effect well is this i mean you see and no it clearly didn't come that way that's a nice little feature that i got to see firsthand the print head making on its own isn't that nice yeah. And now getting on to the actual prints themselves, I can tell you that with a one millimeter nozzle, I, I of course did the proper thing and dove head first into 0.8 millimeter layer heights. That's right, the deep end first. And here it is. Oh, wait. No, that, that's not right. So I filled around a bit more and I got this. Yeah, I, I know it's a bit of work of art to some, but I was looking for bigger prints, faster and stronger than before. So with some trial and error, I found that my first problem is low adhesion to the belt. Some good old purple glue helps solve all that and give us, well, this. Yeah, I mean, look at it. This is what time and effort gets you when messing around with something not really intended for this use case. Uh, do you see the gaps? The fun little noises I can make here? It's not intentional. I'm not some sort of 3D you know, design genius that can make this happen on purpose. It's that the nozzle literally can't put out enough plastic to make it work. To have those lines adhere to each other so there ends up being an enormous gap between the layers. In fact, I found I had to go all the way back to 0.3 millimeter layer height in order to get the layers to stick properly on any of the top layers, not let alone be dimensionally accurate with enough plastic being extruded. <laughs> yeah, this is really the fun stuff. Also, you probably guessed it by now, but doing all of these things in simple little vase or shell mode did help with some rigidity, but not nearly enough. In fact, the wall warping and lack of overall strength is really what got in the way the most when doing anything here then, you know, just like a calibration cube. So, I, even after more prints that failed or just were not up to snuff, I still had to hold my head high, take a walk, and we'll go back to 0.4 millimeter nozzle because that's the funny thing about it. I was actually spending way more time trying to get the one millimeter tip working on this printer than actually using the 0.4 millimeter in the first place. And here's some food for thought for you. I'm not saying that I wouldn't go back to a larger nozzle size, you know, in the future. Uh, that's where this bag of assorted tips comes in handy, but I am throwing in the towel kind of for now because I, I, I can actually make usable stuff with the point four at this point and with no supports, mind you. And it's actually handy. Hey, so I just want to say uh, thanks for checking out this clip. If you made it here to the end, well done, good for you. For everybody else, well, I, he never saw this bit, so I don't really know why I'm talking to you. Okay, bye.